Awesome. Well, welcome everybody. We have myself, Adam Whaley, and my partner in crime. Cody Fintech, that's me. We uh, released some blogs and some new awesome React Native tools this week. Um, and we wanted a chance to kind of hop on here and maybe show them off and kind of a code example, answer questions, comments. Um, we love some audience participation if you're around. And if you're checking this afterwards, definitely if you have more questions, add comments and me and Cody will do our best to answer them. And you can find the, for all the open source tools that we're bringing up today that we just introduced, we wrote blog posts for them this week. You can check it out on our LinkedIn and we'll put some posts probably in the comments too so folks can see them. All right. So with that, we're ready to jump in. Get yeah. Started. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, so yeah, we, thought, we figured the best way to introduce these tools maybe in a live session is why don't we build an app with them? So here we have um, a really simple to-do app, you know, like a to-do list. Um, could you actually make that a little bigger? With the power of technology, we can make it bigger. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So we have our app name here, do queue, your queue for the to-dos. Definitely the best name ever. Our app's gonna be a hit. Um, the thing is, we gotta implement some parts of it. So here we have um, an add button. Do you mind clicking that real quick? And here you can enter in your to-do. So it actually works. Type in some chat stuff. Got to do some stuff. If we hit save. Oh, and it doesn't save it because we didn't implement it. And that's why we're here. So um, we're first going to implement our add button. So we can actually add to-dos to our list. And what we want to see it happen is kind of it flow down below. But um, yeah, let's implement add. All right. So giving, so here, I, yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna say we're here at the app level. We have our little add modal and our little app header, which our app header is where our add button is. We have a little to do buttons and there's our little add to do pressable. Yep. So this is the actual button you're hitting when you hit, you hit add. Um, yeah. and this one's actually wired up because this one, yeah. So basically what this will do is turn on the modal. Um, but the thing we need to implement is basically that save button is not doing anything. You are right. So we want to back up a little tour. Um, and for those joining as well, we have test driven or test drove the entire app. We're going to continue to test drive the app. So if you haven't seen test driven development in react native, you're in for a treat. Yeah. So inside our add modal then we have our close button and our save button it looks like on save we close the modal and we don't do anything i think we want these tests yeah and if we run those real quick just to prove that they work and just so we know they work because i don't know okay there yeah, they do work sweet um so we have quite a bit of tests in here just for all the various functions but here we have a save describe block um, we're using Jest, comes pre-configured with most React Native apps. Um, but we're checking that, well, we're clicking the save button and now we need to write a test that it actually saves. Uh, it adds it to our to-do collection? Yeah, adds to collection. <clears throat> cool. So what does that look like for us? So let's look a little bit at our UI. We have our add modal. We have an is visible prop and a set is visible prop. So how are we getting our collection? Yeah, so let's actually go and take a step back towards the app uh, TSX again. We'll give a little uh, walkthrough of this. So the way, I guess the question now is how are we getting the to-dos on the screen? And we see on line 22, we actually are using a React context. Um, a to-do provider that is, if we command click in there real quick, just to show a little bit of that. Here we have um, some of the boilerplate of creating a provider, but we see that we have a to-do list. And in there, there's a default to-do is a little bit of the right. Um, 
And that is how we have the to-do there. And as you can kind of see too, we have an add method. And yes, the add method doesn't do anything yet, but it does exist. Um, so what we can do is, and just so we know how to get this to, if you scroll up a little bit, there's a hook, a React hook called use to do. It gives you access to that object being created below. Um, but you have to be wrapped in the, the provider. Um, but since we have the add method, we could actually, you know, have introduce a test double for the UI, validate that we're actually calling the add method with the correct to do that's being created. And then we can come back here and implement, actually implement this add method as two separate steps. And so this will be like a top down approach. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're starting from the UI. Do we want to explain maybe just the opposite of that? What would a bottom up approach look like? In we can go either direction, but just maybe give the opposite of what that would look like. Yeah, that would be we would implement the add um, function first. Typically, this is also what I like to do. I like to go inside out. Um, so build the tool that you kind of want, which here we need an add method, and then uh, wire that up to the UI later. But we're going to do the opposite, where we're starting from the UI or wherever the user interface is, really. And working into inside the system. Um, so you said we want to create a a stub to do collection. Yes, we need to create a to do collection that we can then spy on to make sure that we're actually calling the add method correctly. And it's going to be need to do something with this. So I kind of want to put it up here. So now I do a const stub. Collection? Yes. Are we okay with that? Uh, can we make it a factory method? Just because um, then the tests won't. Uh, so, like, create. Yeah. Create. To do collection. Yeah. And that's just so we can build this in the before each and then our tests aren't uh, talking to each other because that isn't fun. Yeah. We're going to return. And you can slap the interface right on the end. There's a little trick for you or for folks using the IDE, um, especially WebStorm, which is what we're using right now. You can actually, yeah, what Adam's doing is basically you put the interface on the return type of the method. And in this case, it's just regular JavaScript object. And you can option enter, implement all members. This is nice for, for yeah, testing because you just make me the simplest thing. And we can do just that F in here just to yep. make it easy. You just got to get rid of the add to do. Or yeah, that. Done. That. Sweet. Got ourselves a very simple. Can we call this create spy? Because technically it's a spy. Uh, at least the way we're going to be using it is a spy. So at least we're, um, it's kind of our intent. Happy to do that. Okay. So now we need to wrap this around there right yeah we need to inject the how do we yeah basically the question is how do we inject this into um our ad modal so it has access to it so when we write the hook in the production code it actually is using our test double and in this case we can wrap this with just using the raw context so you can say to do to do context uh, not to do to provider do. uh dot provider that's it yep and it was slightly different yeah it's a little verbose all right I'm gonna put that there okay thank you web store for helping me out <laughs> and then you have the intro right. yeah yep. what would our value be and this is the spy so Quick thing there of just call the method, but I know we're going to want it. So, do, so this will be our spy. Yep. Do collection. And we want it to exist outside. And Make it a const. You can do it. that. Oh, there you go. So I simply just split it. And so then it's here. And now it's getting created for each and every task. And that's a little bit of work and technically changed all of our tests, even though we're not using it. All of our tests are still passing, so that's great. Nice. 
come in down here. So what do we expect to happen when we hit the save button? Do we just expect our spy ad to be called? Yep, we're expecting ad to be called. Um, and it's actually going to be, to be called with. Um, and we're going to have an expected... Um, expected... Yep, and if we actually look up a little bit, because um, we, yeah, we didn't want to start from scratch just because there's a lot of boilerplate that need to be added. But if you look through our describes, they're kind of built on top of each other. Um, mm -hmm. So in this case, on line 38, um, or 39, actually, we're, we're introducing um, this title, Do the Dishes. So basically, we're creating it to do do the dishes. So our save button, we should actually expect a new to do with the title, Do the Dishes, to be created. Um, so I like inside, I like you say we're building this nested thing. So maybe we do here is um, expected to do. Yeah, that's great. Is a to do. And again, I'll use the object. And while this is relatively easy, it's just good to practice just that nice fancy tool. And we actually just want to say to do title. Because we Boom. can actually pull it from the next. And now we're here. So now if I run tests for this one thing, hey, look, right. we have a failing test. Doesn't work. Sweet. That's exactly what we want. We're in red. So now let's make this test green. Um, so we're clicking our save button. So here's that. Yep. So first we're going to need access to the collection. So on line eight, maybe, or wherever we can um, say use to do's. I think. Yep. That was my method name. That gives us our collection with that same interface. And now on our save method, we can call the add method constructing and passing in our to-do based on the user input. And I'll do this simple uh, mm -hmm. title would be new to-do. This is just the string, right? Yeah, yeah. And to walk through this for a sec again, um, on line nine, we have a React state new to do. And if we look down in the JSX, um, we actually have a text input right there, editable card, which if we click in there just for a sec, just to make sure we're all up to speed. We have a text input that just on when that text input changes, it actually updates that state. So that state is always the string that um, we of the to do that we want to save. Yeah, so just to verify, our placeholder is enter to do. So if I hit add, enter to do. So we know we're here. Yep. All right. I think it's as simple as this. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what the tests say. There you go. Passing tests. And make sure we didn't break anything else. I'm going to run all tests. Beautiful. Nice little test suite there. Add UI test for saving to do. Nice. So yeah, this is half of it. We're going from the UI basically to the actual collection. But if we earlier in the provider, add still doesn't do anything. It's it's a it's a no op, no operation method. Yeah. So let's top that over there. Sweet. Yep. So now we're going to implement. So yeah, if you open up, actually, can you try open up the UI again, just to really showcase the, uh, yeah. yep. So as we see, we're hitting save and it is, well, it's doing stuff as our tests say, but we're still not making the, the actual uh, next item. So let's build add on the to-do provider. Sweet. And if we look here, just scanning through the tests, uh -oh. it can add to the list. So we kind of have, add to be defined. Mm -hmm. So we at least know we've exposed add, but we haven't actually written the functionality. So maybe we just start with a new uh, add to the list. Yeah. Um, knowing that this one's probably going to go away, but we'll keep it there just for the time being. And mm -hmm. looking at these two tests, we have this fun little two lines of duplication. And I have a feeling that we're actually going to have three now. Oh, 100% will. <laughs> um, 
um, because the hook, basically what we're doing here is we're using the React testing, React native testing library. We're testing the actual hook on the right. That's a little bit up. I think it's on line 10 in the right file in the to-do provider. But basically this uh, renders the hook on basically a, a little component. And what we need to do so it still has access to the provider is we need to do this weird wrapper thing where basically we give it this function that it'll put the hook inside the provider. Um, it's kind of a weird little syntax, but gives you access to what you need. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got our hook and now we can call it just the same um, very verbose way as above. So theoretically we want to add yep. title and I like, we'll stick with the same and do the dishes because that always seems to be a thing at my house. I did the dishes yesterday when we were writing these examples. <laughs> <laughs> so if anything, this app made me do the dishes. So thank you. Yeah. So then we should be able to say expect hook dot result dot current dot to do's. Yep. And it should be equal to we have our default to do. Yep. And our I'm gonna say new to do, which is going to be red. So I'm actually going to extract this as a variable and say new to do. Beautiful. It looks like I've I lost my web storm settings to make that const. I noticed that three times now. So now we're saying we call add and we're expecting our current list of to do's to equal two, because remember we always initialize with our first default. Right. Eh. And we are failing. Looks like we're failing for the right reason too. We have the first one, we don't have the second one. Perfect Makes sense. All right, so here we are. We are in our use state. So I believe this would be simply because it's an array. We want to say set to do's. Yep. And this takes in a function. Yep. Um, to do's, I would call that. Yes. Yep. So it's basically a function that given the list, create a add. new, yeah, it has to be a new object. Yep. This is a fun thing for, for rendering. Yep. So use concat, basically it'll, we're making a new list anytime this is called with the new element at the end. Um, yeah. So I went ahead and did a rename on this as just a new to do to help this since we already had to do's, to do's, to do's, and a to do. Yep. And why doesn't it like it? So uh, one part is we have to wrap the add on line 35 with an act. So one thing with um, the React testing library is, uh, use the bottom one too. Um, anytime you perform a change that will basically update something that would cause a re-render, such as updating React state, you got to wrap it in an act. Um, it'll make the red go away. And there we go, now it passes. Um, so yeah, that's a fun thing. Whenever you're testing hooks, if they end up changing state or basically anything that would cause a re-render where the the React cycle will have to run again, you have to wrap it in an act because it knows then to wait for the React cycle to finish or something like that. Yeah. So now that we have three tests, I'm noticing a pattern with these three things. Ooh. Okay. Yep. And we have, this is, I think, where we can... Um, sell you our new cool open source thing that makes this a lot easier. Uh, but let's first commit just because we've introduced this new behavior and then we'll perform the refactor in a separate commit. To keep those isolated. So implement add on our to-do collection. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so these this wrap. I mean, the, this syntax is kind of weird. First of all, and second of all, like you're saying, we've now hit the three strike rule with our um, du with duplication. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, we you know this is kind of irritating. So there's a bunch of ways you'd extract it, but from learnings that we've had working on a bunch of React apps, uh, we've actually created a cool thing called the React Render Builder. 
Um, and we're going to show you how to use it right now. The first you want to extend. Yep, you got it. A React Render Builder, which gives us some nice little functionality. Mostly these four helper methods, and we'll experiment with at least one of them, if not two of them. Um, but that gives us access to some new functions. What we're doing here is now we're extending any other kind of provider that we want to attach to our elements. Correct, Cody? Yes. So we have a to-do provider. So maybe this is a with to-do. Mm -hmm. And it's a builder pattern. So we want to return this. And there's a simple add element. And yep. this takes in a provider function because we have to pass children through. That's how providers work. So we get children passed into this. And we simply want to say the to-do provider with children and children. And then close the element. And to make it clear too, this is the same thing that's being written on line 20, 28. We just call it children just because we're not passing any other props. So just be really clear. It is exactly the same thing as the wrappers written right now. Yeah. So you see, this is wrapping in this way, but you also notice too in our these tests. Yeah. We actually wrap it in this way. Okay. So I have this. So now what? So now let's move one test to it, and then we'll kind of just show it from here. So let's start off with this first test: returns default from provider. So um, it's very easy to just change render hook to it. So we new up our new class, new render builder. Right here? Yeah, you can just do it right there. Yeah, why not? New render builder with to do and say dot render hook. Yep, and now you can get rid of the wrapper thing because it doesn't want that. And all we care about is passing in the hook because we said we wanted the wrapper with to do here. And we see wrapper is no longer used. So let's remove that and let's run this test. And it passes. It passes just fine. Look at that. All right, so I think I want to do that all three times. Yep. And let's run those tests. This seems like a great commit point. Yeah. And as you're writing the commit message, if we look at it, wait, we still have duplication. So there's actually something great we can do right here, which is something we did a lot with this render builder, which is Notice we're, we're doing that same line in all three places. Why don't we extract that? Yeah, just like that. And throw it in before each, just yep. to be safe with test isolation. Not specify, uh, yeah, specify type and split. And then move that in before each. Give me some spacing so we can read. And I'll do control R. Look at that. And there we go. So I'm also noticing we have a bajillion one of these things. Do we have anything for that while I do this commit? We do. Um, so one, yeah. I mean, we've kind of made it clear how we feel about the hook.result.current. So we actually added a little method called render hook result. That just gets you what the hook returns. Now, the only caveat with this is anything that would cause a re-render, you'd now lose that ability to actually subscribe to that. But there's a lot of tests where we don't care, like this one, um, and like the test below as well. But that can add to list. You can also use render hook result. And now we get rid of all this noise. Yeah. Um, and just to make it clear, too, uh, try doing it on, on the third test, too. And well, this is actually not good because we want the the update won't propagate just because the way React state works is when you actually change the state, it doesn't change the state in that instance. It actually updates the state for the next render and then re-renders. So we need a new reference of that object. And as we see here, it didn't actually add it. And that's why you still want access to the raw render hook um, return value. Oh, sorry, clicked the wrong thing. <laughs> you are good. So I'm going to undo those. But we're here. And then now that this test is super simple, to me, it's almost useless. I'd actually vote to delete. Yep. Not so providing value anymore. 
Nah. Awesome. All right, I'm going to commit that. What is our next step here? There's actually one more thing I think we can do here that kind of still showcases Render Builder, um, which is even though... Yeah, even though the hooks had the duplication, technically the thing we built works with regular JSX rendering, which is right up there. So if we move the the let and the before each up to the uppermost describe block, we can actually we use this for JSX rendering too. All right. So what do we have here? Render builder. Dot render. And that render just, it's its literally a thin wrapper around the render that was there. Um, and now you can delete the to-do provider yeah. on line 23. Okay. It's the same. <clears throat> yeah. And there's probably not a lot of times you're going to be testing both um, JSX and hooks in the same file. But I think the intention that we brought with this Builder, if you, can, you, can you scroll back up to the builder that we built? The intention is you can actually reuse this builder across multiple test files. So that way, when you have a data provider, and let's say it's used in a lot of places because you don't want to drill props through your whole app, you can actually reuse this builder. And that way, you only have to write um, a little thin method to wrap the data provider once, and then you can reuse it across all your tests. Yeah, so thinking back to when we had our add modal test, we made the spy and we had to do this, right? We could theoretically extend it to take in a value. Maybe. That's it would, it would be a little way. different, but we could, I think what would be nice, and actually, why don't we just do it, um, would be um, actually have a spy to do collection, like have a method that takes it in. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yep. And it and takes it in. Yeah. So to do collection, to do collection, and it's going to return this because we got to follow the builder pattern. We'll get that out of the way. Yep. It's going to look very similar. Children. Yep. This is to do context.provider. To do context.provider value. To do collection and uh, children, children. Yep. Thank Little you. rose. Oh, rose by itself. Thank you, Webstone. <laughs> and then we have this. Cool. And then the only thing I would suggest, um, you could you could export it here. Actually, let's show the bad thing. E export it here, which is bad. Never do this. <laughs> and then change this test. Yeah, and then we'll change that test just real quick, just to use it. I'll change it over here. So then I want to say new render builder dot spy to do collection passing in our spy dot render and then dot render and now we can get rid of that. Yep. Now we've encapsulated that in one place. If that ever changes, there's only one implementation that needs to change. Um, but notice this bad thing. Um, or is it being yeah? See, notice add modal is running twice. Why yeah, is that? I ran add modal test and it ran twice. Uh, and this is the fun thing: never export anything in your tests because the way the jest, um, the way the jest runner figures out what tests to run, it actually will go through the import statements. So we should move this to its own file. Uh, we can't put it in the test directory, unfortunately, because then jest will yell at us. Um, so they have oh, to did they go into the test. Oh, yeah, yeah, you put it in the test directory. Let's just move it up for now. Uh, what we've done in the past is we've made a test configuration folder. For now, we're not going to do that, but um, just some small things. But as you can see, it was, it's really easy to extend this pattern, and it kind of gets rid of a lot of the noise in your tests. Because again, your test should read as documentation. The less implementation details that are in them, the better. You're protected from uh, volatile changes, and it's easier to read so people can understand how the app works just by looking at the test. I'm committing as we're green and we did some good refactorings there. I'm going to go ahead and just do our nice small micro commit. Cool. So now let's actually look at the app because we built ad and we never looked at it. Um, yeah. Let's do the dishes. Yep. 
And boom, do the dishes. Let's add another one. Take the trash out. It's another trash night. <laughs> my, at my house, too. Yeah. Trash out. Beautiful. And what else? One more. One more. Um, sweep the floor. Notice these are all household chores because I need to do a lot of things. There you go. <laughs> cool. So, hmm, next thing we should build. It's I like when we started the app up, we have make to-do list as the first post it because that's kind of funny because that's the first thing you got to do. But we've already added one, so we that one should probably just go away on its own. Um, so what if we had it so our ad method actually the first time we add something that post it just goes away or that to do just goes away. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So we're looking at also, ads. I just looked at the comments. Thanks for the call out page and everyone attending. If anybody has any questions, comments or anything, feel free to spit them out. We'll, um, we'll answer them right here. Yeah. Thank you all for the call outs. Hope you're enjoying this too. It's a lot of fun. I'm having fun. I don't know. So we're doing TDD. So we want to say clear the initial on first ad. Can, can we say clears the default just because that's the word we've used in the variable? Sure. Oh, yeah. Sweet. I think we want this exact same test, except now that we're adding it, we don't want the default. Which will kind of be the same test actually but um we'll figure this out in a minute yeah. yep <laughs> we'll start right. we'll start with the, the one edge case that we want to make pass first there you go and then man okay so the test is failing and can you can you scroll up the just uh, a search statement just for a sec i know it's in the test runner below oh yep and as we can see it's still there um, so let's remove it. Um, and actually, um, yeah, this is going to get really hard with this use state stuff, right? I mean, I have to go through and see if it's there. Yeah. Um, so what we should probably do is, well, like, yeah, I mean, it'd be like if to do's, equals the same array or something weird like that. Yeah, so if we do this, if to do's and equal to default, is that really what we want? Yeah. I think let's try it. Let's make it work, but it is kind of gross. Um, yeah. And I think actually, it, oh no, actually it's going to be, uh -oh. um, yeah, because it's red. It, it's red because the reference has to be the same. So if you hide over it, yeah, it's always false because objects are, are compared by reference. So actually what we need to do now is extract a whole variable on line 26. Um, this variable? Yeah, and what's fun too is we can't, uh, this is the fun thing about functional React, we'll actually have to put that, that initial state variable, we'll have to define it outside of this function. Because it's going to construct that that um, array every single time. So now we got to do this weird. Yeah, that's weird. I don't like that. But it should it's work. Yeah. It should work. Uh, and you'll need to return inside the if statement. We will. Thank you. And now it's green. Yay. Awesome. But yeah, so we have lots of here. We had to do this thing. This yeah. doesn't look weird. Like, I mean, making this initial state made it a little bit more readable, but it felt definitely weird doing this. Um, yeah. yeah. And, um, before we continue, just cause we're, um, so I think there's, we got a refactor that's going to make that great, but right now we still have failing tests. We run the whole, uh, file mm -hmm. and just the other test, the add test. And I'm wondering if we just delete that one for now, cause technically we've kind of removed how, what happens when you add the first element in the list. Yeah. Yep. Fine by me. So we're green. Commit. Yep. We'll commit. And then. Now we'll showcase the second tool we've uh, open sourced that makes the nonsense that we were doing on the right a lot easier. 
Yeah. So I think our first thing to do is now it's called React Ref. Use React Ref is mm -hmm. the name of the package, but it comes with two methods, use React State and use React Ref. And it kind of gives us some nice functionality around capturing little bits of information when we already have them and makes things easier. Um, uh, to do array, just because I want a new name, and after we delete that, so I'm going to say use React State. And the nice part here is that I'm going to reuse our initial state as that. Yep. And so now, if you look at the type that WebStorm is helping, we have React State to do instead of our deconstructed thing here. Yep. And one of the cool functions we have on here is we can actually you can actually ask, hey, is it the initial value? Is the initial value still set? Because it encapsulates that that list on creation. Um, so now I should be able to say to do array dot is initial value. Well, that's kind of nice. And then I think this becomes to do array dot set. Just yep. a small change there. And then that's to do's colon to do array dot value. So just a quick, array. just a little bit of a, a change because now there's no longer a tuple being that provides the values. It's backed by an object. Yeah. So run. Cool. Clears the default. And now we actually can probably get rid of that really weird initial state variable on 25 and just inline that. It's only used once, so yeah. Small inline, and we're back to there. And then let's run the test. Nice. And we're good. Um, yep. And there's a bunch of other kind of just small methods that we've added to this React State class just to help encapsulate and reveal intention of what you're trying to do. Um, a lot of the thing like, like that was really awkward to have to write by hand and it's covered for you. Um, there's also an is equal method. Um, also because it's an object, you can just pass it around too, instead of having to pass multiple parts of it around. Um, but we'll kind of see more as we go. Um, and the same, the same interface too, there is for, there's a use ref, there's a use react ref. It's the same thing. Um, yeah. Just, it's pretty much the same methods, just uh, except for get, which is the main difference between ref and state in the first place. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, let's look at the UI. Is the things are working? Things. So there's make to do list. Dishes. And it's still there. Sweet. So it looks like we got some more tests to write. Yeah. Why do we think it's still there? I don't know. But. Oh, you're refreshing. Oh, there it's not go. there because you got to refresh the uh, the metro terminal. That's why. Yep, if I had a feeling that was it. That's why I wanted to make sure before we do it. Yeah, and that's the fun sure. thing with with uh, React Native folks. Make sure you refresh the JavaScript terminal because sometimes it doesn't get the updated code. <laughs> awesome. All right. What if we want to use this on a tablet because it's React Native, right? We need to be able to target different devices, different things. Yeah, so it'll just work. Um, I think the only fun thing is, you know, we go from a handheld to a tablet. They're pretty different aspect ratios, um, as we kind of see here. Um, I'm trying to make it bigger, too, just so I can have you all see it. There we go. Yeah. So if I do here, it's like it didn't, uh, it it didn't, didn't update either. either. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, so I'm seeing a lot of a lot of real estate here on the tablet being being wasted. Right, we have so much more room to look at all of our. 
Yeah, on handheld, it makes sense, like it being this kind of uh, column-based, or I should say vertical-based layout. But on tablet, we actually have a lot more horizontal space. Why can't we just do a horizontal layout? Um, so why don't we try to target that? Yeah, I'm going to close out my tab just because if we're looking at UI things, typically go down to one so we can split them. So I have to do cards. Maybe that's where I need to go. Yep. And look. Aaron, so yep. You said we want to do flex direction and we want to say row. Yeah. For those just viewing just real quick, just so we have the shared understanding. To do cards is basically we're taking that list of to do's from the collection and we're mapping we're mapping them under scroll view. So if you end up going off the screen. Um but okay, yeah, so that uh actually it's interesting, that is not a row, that's a column. <laughs> that's, a, that's a column of rows, yeah. Okay. But I'm also noticing that it's kind of touching the edge. We've moved it over. Yeah. Notice we don't want that for this mobile. No, we still want it to be center aligned. So it would be nice if we could just target this for uh, our tablet. And wait a second, we built that too. Um, so <laughs> I think the third, the third thing we blogged about and we kind of created... And maybe to give a little bit of a sales pitch too before we jump right into it. Um, one of the apps we were working on, we did have a very drastically different layout for handheld, this uh, mobile format versus tablet. Um, the, the Since we have so much more screen real estate, we could actually smush a bunch of screens together. Um, and we wanted to reuse a lot of our React components because they do render. Um, and what was really irritating was there's no specific way out of the box besides um, manually writing. Actually, yeah, let's mainly write, manually write it for a sec. So what we could do is we have these methods called is tablet and is mobile. So why don't we just say for like for flex direction real quick, why don't you just say is, um, if is tablet, like a ternary, and then or column. Okay, and as we see, now things are looking a lot better. Um, but then we don't need this padding here. Yep, so we can do the same thing. So it yep, is tablet. And now we don't even know what the default padding is because I think there is a default padding. So we'll put zero, I guess. Sure. Yeah, looks but, okay. Can we still get the edge over here? Nice. Yeah, so this is what we did at first. And this just got really annoying. Um, so we we kind of got really frustrated. And we're like, why can't we just write like tablet or like a media query like in CSS? Um, so we built, yeah. So basically it would be nice if we could write that tablet and then inside of that, declare the things you want to override. Similar to how you, in CSS you can put like a media query with the pixels um, right below the class. Um, so that you can see, oh, here's the base, and then I override it for this dimensions. Um, so I think this is what we're kind of going for, right? Yeah, but as you see, TypeScript, TypeScript goes, but it doesn't like that. Um, so this is where we built Media Style Sheet. Um, and we'll show you how to make that. So this, this is all open source. So, so, same thing, just to make sure it's really clear. Use React Ref and the render builder and media style sheets. They're all open source, try them out. The way you do this is you call this factory method providing the media options you want. So in our case, we want that key tablet and we want the key um, mobile. <clears throat> what I'm doing here, right, is we get a key of tablet and we also give it a function. That's the other half of that. The function that returns true or false to whether the no you are that media or not. Um, so if we just look again, we'll do is tablet is coming in with another library of React Native device info and it literally just has is tablet and then is mobile is it's not a tablet, it's mobile. Yeah. And actually just just real quick, 
one thing we'll do at the end of this too is we will make this this repository public so folks want to deep dive and look at some of how the pieces kind of build together we will just make this public so folks can look at it um it's one thing i thought about but uh anyway so now media style sheet it's just a drop-in replacement for style sheet so it has the same interface Uh, I think I did the thing I always do. Yep. I did yep, that. You got to export it. Export it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I didn't have to change anything down here, and we're happy. And now, if we look, boom. We saw that one refresh and get applied. And now, actually, and now these are, I don't even need that because it's our default. Yep. But say we, if we wanted something here, we also have mobile. Yeah, so why don't we make like the background uh, or the let's get it a border with the, the 10 and then a border color of red just to really show that uh, it only targets mobile. You had to pick like the worst. <laughs> the worst color? Red. Yeah, I think red, the default red is the worst color. It's like the same color as my red guitar behind me. So you should, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, just to really showcase that it it works. What's also really cool too, um, below uh, in in the IDE, can you under styles like use it as a variable? Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do it up here. Oh, you can't That's do it up there. Yep. Yep. So it actually it fully works. Yep. Scroll container. So all Scroll the TypeScript container. and stuff works. Um, the one thing is you can't get access to flex direction because they ha it has to be defined for both of them because you can't guarantee that it's there. So like if you were to just put flex direction really quick in mobile, just for the example, um, and then put column or yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. Now you see flex direction is there. So if, if you are actually like need these styles for other things, which we, we've done in the past, um, if you define it across all the keys or at the upper level too, that, that's actually something we haven't shown. Why don't we add something at the top level and show that it actually works too? Um, oh, a, a default? Yeah, a default. Uh, I mean, I'll just expand this and say border color or the green. Because why not be Christmas today? Yeah. Red and green. Hopefully, you're not red, green, colorblind. Otherwise, they're both black. But you can trust that's us that they're there. That's also true. <laughs> Uh, yep, so the tablet over in the left has green and the mobile device on the right has red. And they're both sharing that 10. If we got rid of that, you wouldn't actually see the color because there needs to be a border width. Um, very easy, very extendable. Yeah, and like a lot of these things, you'd probably would prefer to use any way you can make the styles the same, probably preferable. But for layouts, we really were struggling and... We found that using this just made things so much easier than all those nested ternaries. Um, at one point, we were targeting specific things for iOS tablet versus Android tablets too. And so it was saying, is iOS ternary, is mobile ternary? And it was it's just a headache. But cool. There we go. I don't think we actually want that. No, we don't want that border color. Sure. <laughs> but there's a good example. I know it's not perfect, but it, maybe it's check-in. Yeah, that's definitely a check-in. Uh, move tablet style to row. There we go. Sweet. Um, so now maybe to close this out, why don't we, so if we go back to the UI for a sec, like we can add stuff, we can't delete mm -hmm. stuff. Um, now we've had this little, uh, cute look looking little X button, but actually what's more interesting, I think to build is what if we created a button that was clear all where it just deletes them all. I like it. Let's do that. Cool. And this is fun too because we didn't build any of the stuff beforehand. So you get we're we're gonna do it all. Um so maybe we add this below the add button in the header. Yeah, and the to-do uh -huh. buttons. 
And let's test drive um, seeing that on the screen first. And I don't think there's, I think, I think the test for the to do button might be in the header because this was extracted just from styles. Nope, but we can do it here. <laughs> I was say, I think we just test this independently. If I had to guess, we have, yeah, we have tests on the button itself. Got it. Why don't we just test one on the header then that just says that it's there? Simple as that. Uh, since we already have the test file, yes. Yeah, just to start it off. So it renders name. I'm just going to copy. It renders button. And so we want to get by tech add. Yep. And I'll wrap that in a string. And what do you want this button to say? Clear? Yeah, clear all. I think I think putting all in there makes it a little clear. Let's see what and see, we're not doing expect statements, but the actual um, API throws an exception if it's not there. So it's basically the same thing. Um, yeah, if we really wanted to get through expect, you could wrap this into expect to throw. And we actually, I think, ended up doing that in a couple of projects we were in to just make it read easier. Yeah, more intention revealing. But cool, clear all, all does right. exist. Now we can just write a blank button that does. Can we make it pressable? Yeah. Yeah, we can make it pressable. It doesn't do anything. With the text clear all. Cool. And if we run that, dun, 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 it works. Nice. Checking in. Cool. Um, yeah, now I like the idea of doing what we did with add, which is extract this as a little component. And then maybe we test that independently. <clears throat> we might. Do we lose you, Adam? I think we might have lost Adam. And that's okay. Oh, he's Are back. You? You're back now. I might be having Wi Fi issues. Yeah. That's fine. We've got eight minutes left. There we go. Clear all. Sweet. Cool. Yeah. And let's just uh, write a separate test against it. Do you want me to make a new file or do you just throw it in here? Nah, just throw it in here. Just to make it simple. Yeah. Normally we'd put it in another file, but. That's okay. Yeah, just for the sake of time. <clears throat> so clears all to do items. Yep. So what so does you, this look like? So what if we just again to help encapsulate the to do collection? Why doesn't the collection itself export a clear button or a clear function? And that's the thing we'll, we'll end up calling. Um, so our render builder, we'll yeah, we'll need, we'll need a spy. We'll have to create a spy. Oh, yeah, it's in the other file. And we're going to need to export that. Yes. Create a variable. Cost. And so we need views. We need add. Yep. And then we're saying there's this add. new magical clear function that doesn't exist yet. Nice. Clear button. So we've rendered that. So theoretically, we should be able to say fire event dot press. Yep. Clear button. Clear button dot uh, find by. You still got to find it by text. Oh, yeah. Get by text. Clear all. And that's our act. And now our uh, search statement would be that clear is called. 
and inspect. Spy the new collection dot clear to have been called. And I'm not running this a whole file. I want to just close it. <laughs> we'll run the whole file, not just the describe. There we go. Sweet. So now it's failing. Now we can, yep, call our use to do's. And now we can make the pressable on press a clear method that does not exist. Probably have to add it to the to the um the thing, but uh Oh no. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Oh no, what shall we do? So let's add it to the interface. Do collection. Yep, clear. Clear. And it looks like it's colon void. Which is probably gonna throw here. Yep. So you can just look familiar. I just let the ID do it. Because that's that way you don't have to figure it out. That way I don't have to think. Implement all members. Boom. This is why interfaces are nice. All right. And then the same thing, you'll have to actually do this in the, um, or actually, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, cool. Solid the test. Clear all button passes, but the other tests fail because dun, 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 we need access to a to-do collection. Um, so this kind of goes back to, you know, it's really annoying having to write that provider around everything. With our builder, we can just reuse it. Yeah, so maybe wrap them in a, in a describe altogether. If you want to just reuse it real quick. Uh, just We're just moving in. Describe. Yeah, just moving in. Yep. And then extract variable. That up. Split. Cool. And all these tests are best. Uh, other than make these things you're right. Yep, render builder at render, you're right. And yeah, once we uh, built the render builder, we kind of use it in every test just because it made things a lot easier. Sweet. Yeah. Yep. Easier and consistent. Consistent is good. Helps reduce cognitive load on making new tests. Yeah. So we're at two minutes. Probably a great time to call it, even though we didn't get to see our, our beautiful... Actually, we'll pull up the UI for a sec, because it's not going to be beautiful. It's going to be very ugly looking. Our very not beautiful clear all button. Um, but we're going to open source, or well, at least, I guess, make this repository public. For those listening, if you want to check it out, why not pull this down and see if you can um, get the next part implemented where Clear All actually does something on the to-do. The hint is, use React State makes this really easy. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, that was really fun. It was. Thanks everyone for joining too. Um, it was cool to show off some of the new tools that we've kind of been using and how it makes developing in React easier. Yeah, and clear, clearer. Yeah, with built with building some of the examples, it is funny how I don't know how much more fluent and faster we feel like developing while using the tools. Like even when we were building that, uh, where we wanted the initial or the default to do to go away, that felt so awkward because we knew just from using this little tool we built like a year and a half ago, we're like, oh, just. Just say is initial value. It already has it. Um, so we do think these, like, regardless if you use them, doesn't matter. We found a lot of value out of them, and that's why we open source them because we think other people would probably find value out of it. Um, no. Um, the other call out, real quick. Anybody that's uh, that wants to use the render builder in regular React and knows how to bundle or, I guess, publish a library that's both React and React Native, message us.
because I don't know how to do that. And if someone teaches me how to do that, I'll make it so you can use that in both React and React Native. Right now, it's just targeting React Native because that's a little bit easier. Well, it's all because it's dependent on the testing library, right? There's a separate testing library for the render function that is React Native specific. Yeah, so it would be like dynamic import statements. I mean, I could hack it together, but I, I'm sure there's a better way. Yeah. But all right. thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Yep.